Praise God, dear brothers and sisters. What I want to speak to you today is go. Jesus said, go into the whole world and preach the gospel. In Matthew 28, Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. So today I want to speak to you on go. Don't plan to go. Don't just keep preparing to go. Don't just organize programs to go, but go. Why? Because the harvest is plentiful. In John chapter 4, verse 35, Jesus said so beautifully, Do you not say there are four months? Then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. This is the key if you want to go. What is the key? The key is to lift up your eyes and see that the harvest is plentiful. Harvest is ripe. We need to lift up our eyes and see. What does it mean? It means to say we need to take our eyes of ourselves, of our uh, careers, of our jobs, of our finances, of our children, of our uh, the economy, you know, of our marriages. We need to take our eyes of ourselves. Then we will have the ability to lift up our eyes and see. When we lift up our eyes and see, we will see only one thing. We will see the harvest fields. The harvest is ripe. We need to go. And that's why today, we don't want to look at the whole world. We only want to look at the Catholic segment. Such a huge, huge number of Catholics in this world. We need to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to them, isn't it? Yeah, many are going to churches, are praying, but still living defeated lives, living in darkness, living in failures, living in disappointments, living in frustrations. We need to take the gospel to them. We need to take the gospel to penetrate the life of every single Catholic on the face of this earth. That's why we need to go. Pope uh, St. John Paul II said, Catholics need to be re-evangelized. How correct. Catholics need to be re-evangelized. So let us take the gospel to them. Gospel to them so that the gospel will penetrate their lives in the power of the Holy Spirit. And they will be born again and they will encounter Jesus. And they will not only be people who will hear the word now, they will be people who will proclaim the word of God and they will become evangelizers. Which means what? We have a major task. We need workers in the harvest. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38, Jesus said, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The workers are few. Yes, the workers are few. Those who are working are working. Those who are not working are not working. You see, we need more and more workers in the harvest. More workers in the harvest. How much of your time do you give to be engaged in the vineyard of the Lord? <clears throat> How active are you in bringing the good news of Jesus Christ to your friends, to your brothers, to your sisters, uh, to your family members, to your neighbors, to the people in your parish, uh, pious organizations? How active are you in bringing the good news of Jesus Christ? That's why Jesus told the disciples, go first to the lost sheep of Israel. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to take this scripture. Take this scripture of Jesus. Go first to the lost sheep of Israel. Take the gospel to the Catholics. The Catholics need to be re-evangelized. And that's why every one of us, including myself, we need to pull up our socks. For far too long, we have been too comfortable. We're thinking this job will be done by someone else. Let me give some uh, money to some missionary, missionary organizations. They will do the work of evangelization. No, that is not the call of the gospel. The call of the gospel is for every single person in the church to get engaged in the missionary activity of the church. In Evangelii Nunciandi, Section chapter uh, section 15, it says, 
the church is an evangelizer, but she begins by evangelizing herself first. Yes. So that's why we need to be re-evangelized. When we are re-evangelized, -re we will take the gospel to others. We can't, we can't keep on saying, I'm preparing myself. I'm preparing myself. I need to learn more. I need to learn more. I think the time has come now to respond like Isaiah. Here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I, Lord, send me. And the same uh, encyclical and uh, Evangelii Nunciant in section 24 says, the person who has been evangelized goes on to evangelize others. Isn't this an acid test to our conversion experience, to our encounter with Jesus? The person who has been evangelized goes on to evangelize others. And that is the key to know whether the gospel has penetrated my own life I go on to evangelize others. Think of the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4. When Jesus evangelized her, she took the gospel to the entire village. So you see, she was evangelized and then she in turn became an evangelizer. And she evangelized to the, uh, to the entire village and brought them all to Jesus Christ. Wow, what an amazing story. John chapter 4 verse 4. And that's why Redemptorius Missio section 15 says the missionary task must be the foremost task. Foremost. What are the foremost most? Foremost means top priority. Priority number one. That is the vocation of the church. We are the church. We are the people of God. Our task is to make sure that we get involved in the missionary activity of the church. This will only be possible through the action of the Holy Spirit. That's why in Redemptorius Missio, St. John Paul says, Holy Spirit is the principal agent of mission. The principal agent of mission. It is not my abilities. It is not my talents. It is not my giftings. No, it is the action of the Holy Spirit. He is the principal agent of mission. The Holy Spirit makes the church missionary. Church is you and me. It is the Holy Spirit that will make us missionary. And that is the reason why to develop a wonderful relationship with the Holy Spirit. See? We need to pray more to the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to become more and more active in our lives so that we become missionary. To bring the good news to everyone. Anyone, anyone who is serious about evangelizing, evangelization, anyone who is serious to bring the good news to, to anybody else, will pray to the Holy Spirit. If you're serious about evangelization, you will begin to pray more to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the principal agent of mission and he initiates mission. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8 it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Right? You will receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and then you will be my witnesses. You see, you will receive this power. What is this power he's talking about? The power of the Holy Spirit. Dunamis. The dynamite. You'll become a dynamite. It's dynamite. Dynamic. Zealous for God. You will receive this power. And we have all in the Catholic Church received the Holy Spirit since baptism. We have received this power. It is time to make sure the power is ignited in our lives, fuels our lives, drives our lives so that we can proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and if you want to become uh, a serious about evangelization, if you want to evangelize, it, one thing is to pray to the Holy Spirit. The other thing is to become open to the charisms, to use the charisms in mission. You see, charisms are given for the building of the church. So how much, if you want to build a church, you have to use the charisms. You can't close your life to charisms. Charisms are key if you want to evangelize. St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 10, he lists all the nine charisms. What are they? Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, right? Then prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. Everyone in the Catholic Church must be open to the charisms. They will become operative in your life when you have a relationship, a deep intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And then all these charisms you can use for the building of the church. 
building of the church. And don't, don't pick and choose these charisms. <laughs> don't pick and choose and say, I want this, I don't want this. No. The charisms are available, all nine charisms are available to every single Catholic. Because every charism, the Holy Spirit is the source and we need every charism to evangelize. So don't shut your life to uh, 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 charism like, you know, the gift of tongues. Don't shut your life to it. Be open to it. It's a powerful gift. It's a priceless gift of the Holy Spirit. Because when you pray in tongues, as St. Paul says, you pray not to man, you pray to God. How wonderful, isn't it? And then he says again in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4, he says, He that prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. What is edify? You build yourself. By praying in tongues, you're building yourself to evangelize. And by building yourself, you are also building the church so uh, charisms are very very important in the work of evangelization in the work of mission the early church used the charisms to evangelize we can we can see that in the acts of the apostles saint paul the greatest missionary of the catholic church used the charisms it is he who wrote all about charisms to us he because he used it and that's why he's called the greatest missionary in the catholic church so be open to the charisms they are not optional. <laughs> they are not optional for the Christian life. They are so imperative. They are so important for each one of us so that we live our lives in the power of the Holy Spirit and so that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can bring the good news. So all charisms are needed for evangelization. And then we can minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. When we have a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit, when we are open to all the charisms, we can minister in the power of the Holy Spirit Spirit. Now minister to, to people in the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, to groups or to your parish or anybody. We can minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. There will be signs and wonders. Amen. There will be signs and wonders just like the early church. Signs and wonders were not only reserved for the early church. Signs and wonders are very important for today. We should demonstrate the preaching of the gospel through signs and wonders. And that can only happen when we open become more open to the charisms and we, then we can minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why prepare yourself. When I say prepare yourself, I'm, I'm thinking positive. Now, don't only be in preparation mode. Be ready mode, I would say, no? Be ready mode, you know? Know the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Have a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit. Live a good sacramental life. Be a good witness. Be ready. We call it battle ready, right? Be ready. The call will come. The call will come. And those people who are ready can answer the call. And we are all called to say like Isaiah, here my Lord, send me. So my dear brothers and sisters, lift up your eyes and see. The harvest is plentiful. Plentiful. So many people hungry, thirsty for the word of God, for the word of God. For Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Mother Teresa said, when Jesus said, I thirst, he's thirsting for souls. And we are today the messengers of Jesus. We are the messengers of Jesus Christ. We need to take the message of Jesus. No other message, just not simple secular message, but the message of Jesus, that is the good news. Jesus said in, in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said to them, go unto the whole world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Look at that. Entire creation. And Catholics are spread right through the world. Our duty is to be a witness. Our duty is to become an evangelizer. For us, it is important to engage our, uh, ourselves in the missionary activity of the church. This is the mandate of Jesus. Go. Make disciples of all nations is the mandate of Jesus Christ, the great commission. Let not the great commission become the great omission. Let it not be like that. But let the great commission, let us take the great commission seriously. The mandate of Jesus seriously. Respond to the call of go. And we can, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can reach the world for Jesus. So be ready and be always prepared. Always ready to answer the call of Jesus. We know the story of the ten virgins. Five were foolish. Five were wise. Who were the wise ones? Those who were already ready. The foolish ones, 
are always in this preparation mode, preparation mode, planning mode, discussion mode, just attending program. They are the foolish ones. The wise ones are prepared, are waiting for the call. So my dear brothers and sisters, God is calling us to go and proclaim the good news. Get, set and go. Don't waste any time anymore. Get, set and go. And that is the call of Jesus to every one of us. Amen. And God bless you.